So we're in the lab now and Jamie's got the AV and the collection bottle and he's going to remove the collection bottle off the end of the AV. The collection bottle contains a semen. You can see it's got a filter on it to remove gel fraction and other bits of smeg that have got caught in it. And uh, the cover on the bottle is to keep the sample warm. You don't want it to get cool. So there's our semen sample going into the lab. So semen, when it comes into the lab, has to be um, counted. You have to count how many sperm are actually in the ejaculate or the concentration. Uh, you determine the volume, which is what Jamie is about to do now. He's got a centrifuge tube there, a 50 mil centrifuge tube. He's pouring the semen into the 50 mil centrifuge tube. And in a moment, he'll hold it up and look at it to determine the approximate volume. And then when he does a sperm count, he'll be able to multiply that by the volume to determine the total number of sperm in the ejaculate. It looks like a reasonably concentrated sample. And in a moment, he's going to take a small aliquot of that off for evaluation purposes. Then add extender to the semen, the raw semen. Uh, it's one of nature's ironic little jokes that seminal plasma is actually toxic to sperm over an extended period of time. And that's one of the reasons that we use uh, semen extender to dilute the toxicity of that seminal plasma. So initially, Jamie will add a 50-50 uh, dilution. And uh, that mitigates to some extent the toxicity of the seminal plasma and uh, buys him a little bit of time to do some further evaluations. Also controls the cooling curve somewhat. You saw Jamie take the extender, the semen extender, out of a water bath, which is at body temperature. And you can have a fairly steep cooling curve from body temperature down to room temperature once the semen has been extended with a semen extender. Um, if it uh, cools too rapidly without the semen extender in it, then you can end up with um, some tertiary abnormalities typically in the sperm. You'll see a lot of circling sperm and uh, curled tails. And that has an impact on potential for progressive motility. Jamie's now taking a small sample of, of formalin, um, and he'll take a, 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 an even smaller sample of the raw semen itself, the, do a sperm count. The formalin um, kills the sperm, stops them moving around, obviously, and uh, it allows for the mechanical sperm counter to give a more accurate count. So Jamie's got the IMV AccuRead sperm counter. Um, this is a photometric counting device. relies on shooting a beam of light through the sample. And uh, the more concentrated the sample, the less the amount of light gets through to the other side. And it uh, allows you to determine an estimate, anyway, of the, uh, of the concentration. And uh, in a moment, Jamie, once the count's been presented, will hold up the there we go, 596 million per mil, that's million sperm per milliliter, and that's a pretty concentrated sample. That's a pretty concentrated sample, which as we saw when the semen first came in, I commented that it looked like a reasonably concentrated sample. You can tell that to some extent by just how dark the, uh, the semen looks. If it looks a little bit like uh, skim milk, uh, you know, 2% milk, then it's not going to be very concentrated. But on the other hand, if it looks like cream, uh, really rich cream, you know it's going to be fairly concentrated sperm-wise. Concentration is important. Uh, the determination of concentration is important because we need to know, obviously, how many sperm are in the ejaculate. We need to know how many sperm we're going to be shipping or breeding a mare with. And a higher concentration or a higher total number of sperm are better because it allows one to breed more mares with a single ejaculate. Uh, similarly, if the concentration is too low, we run into issues when we're shipping semen, uh, being able to dilute the toxicity of the seminal plasma adequately to um, actually negate that effect. So we want to see a concentration that's an absolute minimum of 100 million sperm per mil in raw solution. Uh, and over that is good. We can dilute adequately to achieve a, a mitigation of that toxicity. So Jamie's taken a, another sample now, and he's going to look at motility, uh, the actual movement of the sperm underneath the microscope. And we'll be able to look at that on the TV monitor as well. And what he'll be looking for there is uh, to get an idea of the percentage of the sperm that are actually traveling in a uh, more or less straight line. You have two forms of motility. You've got overall motility and progressive motility. And the overall motility is uh, the percentage of sperm that are moving, uh, including those that are going forwards, backwards, sideways, and in circles. 
Now, those chaps really aren't the ones that are going to get uh, the mares pregnant. It's only the sperm that are going forward in a pretty straight line that are going to get the job done. And uh, we can see here that uh, a fairly good percentage of these sperm are, are traveling in a reasonably good forward, straight moving direction. Uh, but you can certainly see a few that are going in circles. And uh, uh, there's one sort of slightly to the left and low of the center there that's definitely in trouble. It's going round in very, very small circles. Jamie will point in a moment to some sperm that are not progressively motile. We can see one that's definitely in trouble there. It's going around in very, very small circles. And uh, he can also point out one that's got good progressive motility. It's going in a nice straight line there. That one's going there. It's trickier to catch those guys than it is the ones that are going in circles. So the semen's been extended now uh, to the final concentration that's desired. And uh, Jamie's taking a small sample, putting it into uh, the... Uh, the syringe and that will in due course be packed and shipped off to the mare owner uh, adding a little bit more extender there writes the name of the stallion on the outside of the syringe doing everything one possibly can to try and prevent any possible mix-up at the receiving end one has to bear in mind that some of the AI facilities are receiving perhaps eight or ten different semen shipments a day and uh, they all come in a styrofoam uh, box and they all look very much the same and it's far easier to make absolutely sure that the semen's the right semen for that particular mare before you put it in the mare. It's very difficult to get it back out again once you've already put it in the mare. So write the stallion's name on the outside of the syringe and hopefully the person doing the inseminating will read that and confirm that it is indeed the correct semen for that mare. The coolant pack going in on top. This is going to cool it down to about 5 degrees Celsius and then put the polystyrene block on top and it's good to go.